Adiós. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. So today we are gonna be setting up the mini pond. As a lot of you may know, we did recently move into our new house and during that whole process, we had to take down the mini pond. So today I decided let's set it back up. We do have all the supplies right here. We have a nice brand new canister filter right there. That's what we're gonna be using. Everything I kind of used on the last pond it did great. So I'm kind of gonna use the same things again. We'll just probably switch up the scape a little. We have a bunch of rock to work with. The goal is to try to make it a little different from last pond. I do have more rock. We're just gonna start with these ones and see what we can do here. This is the fun part, honestly. I think this is the funnest part of building a new aquarium, pond, whatever it may be. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part is. Maybe get a new fish for it, but personally, I like building their homes and just making it like as cool as possible and natural as possible. So the fish or whatever it may be feels like they're at home and that way they don't get stressed out. Now, some of the rocks are different colors too, but uh, once algae and everything starts growing on them, they'll kind of blend together. It won't look so like off colored. I'm gonna try to build up this whole back area and have like a big reef right back there and leave this all open so the fish and everything can swim around. And also guys, when I say mini pond, I mean like 250 gallons. It's not so mini, but compared to that beast right there, yeah, this thing is a mini pond. So pretty much anything that we catch that's a lot smaller and it isn't able to go in the big 6,000 gallon pond, we'll put them in here for the meantime, grow them up and then move them over there, whatever it may be. But uh, yeah, the mini pond will be cool. Just give us access to catch a lot of smaller things. Got some more rock. Let's give it a nice little test as if like a fish hit it. That way it can't fall once fish are in here. Look at that cave, they can go right through. Another big cave, a bunch of caves. Fish absolutely love structures, so that's the goal right now is to add bunch of little hiding spots and when they do want to hide they have it and everything kind of has their own spot so nothing gets territorial Ooh. dude that's looking fire so this right here is actually a coral head but all dried up so it's completely white but uh it still looks really cool so we're gonna add this piece right there a bunch of smaller fish can make their homes through all those little holes once we do get a nice led light set up on here we'll definitely add some mangroves that will just add a lot of like life to this pond scaping is all done we did keep it pretty simple we left a lot of open space but we did also add a bunch of caves for them to hide through it's kind of all just in this corner and this spot is where we're going to be feeding them and doing a lot of filming so that's one reason we kept it open but i think this thing's ready for sand so let's get it in here did just wash out all the sand, just gave it a good little rinse so it's not murky, but let's just add a good layer of it on the bottom here and should be good. So yeah, definitely going to need another bag of sand. For now to get the pond cycled, this would be plenty, but um, in the future here, probably in the next video of the mini pond, you'll definitely see this thing covered in sand. Now I am going to get this filter set up before we add water. Just so when we do, it's ready to go. So in this canister filter, we actually have a bunch of bio media, and that's pretty much all we're gonna need when it comes to uh, the mini pond because there's not gonna be any coral, just fish, and that's pretty much the only thing they do is uh, produce a bunch of bio loads. So just need a good bio filtration. Another cool thing about this filter is it has a built-in UV sterilizer. So pretty much what that does is it keeps the algae down, kills off any parasites in the water column. So that will definitely come in handy. Okay, we now need to put the pipes on and then connect the pump. Oh yeah, real quick. I do wanna show you guys this because it's pretty cool, but the mantis shrimp actually molted his whole body and you can see the mole right back there. He's right there. It's pretty crazy. Lobsters actually do the same thing. I made a video on the lobster doing it, but this guy decided to do it and he does it every so often, but it's the first time I caught him without him eating it fully because a lot of the times they feed on that and yeah, they just use it as like extra protein. So 
We'll have it sucking in water from there and then pushing out water through here so there's a constant circle of flow. You might think this is a square, but actually it has round edges. So it's shaped as a square, but the water will constantly just move in circles due to these smooth edges here. I am gonna cover this pump as much as I can, just so you don't see it. Let's see how we can do this. Yeah, it's pretty good, that worked. <laughs> now I'm gonna hook up the outtake, so water's gonna go through this pump here, go through the canister, go through all that biomedia, and then pump out here, but I'm gonna be switching it up a bit. I'm actually gonna have the flow go through the rocks just like that. With all that water that's pushing back into the pond, go throughout all these rocks, push all that stuff out of here into the open water, and then hopefully that pump sucks it up, and boom, we got a good filtration going. We are ready for water, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Fill it to about this line, not this one, but this one right here. Should be plenty of water. We're looking at about, once it's full, I'd say about nine inches total, which is pretty deep for a little pond like this. And, and they have plenty of room. I mean, now that there's water in it, you can definitely see. Mini pond is all filled up. I do have some bio balls that I took from the big pond filter. We're just gonna add them free floating in here. There's a lot of good beneficial bacteria on those. I also did take a rock from there. Definitely has a lot of good beneficial bacteria. So probably just add this like right here. This thing's ready to get everything flowing. So let's test it out and see how she runs. Here we go. This is gonna fill up, getting all that air out of there. Let's see, no leaks, come on, please. So that canister is filling up right now. Take a couple seconds, and then you'll see a bunch of water hopefully flowing out of here with no leaks. So the filter's running smoothly. We're now gonna add this flow on there, and that's just pushing a bunch of water in a constant circle there, and fish will really like that. If these guys puff up, they possibly have a chance of dying, so we're trying to, boom, just like that. We got him in there. No puff ups, he's looking good. And what we're gonna do, we'll dump as much water as we can out of here. There he goes. Oh, he's literally perfect size for the mini pond. He's a mini puffer fish, it's like meant to be. But look at that, so awesome, man. If you guys don't remember, we went out there and caught these guys in the wild. We brought them back home. Ever since then, their personality has totally grown on me. These puffer fish will literally know to like spit water at you to tell you they want food. So every time they see me walk out here, I just see them dart from the other side of the pond right over and start spitting water at me. So. They definitely are smart fish, but I um, think this guy's gonna love his new home. Definitely keep you guys updated on him, but let's get his bigger brother in the big pond. All the water we're using is the same exact temperature and salinity. It all comes from the same place, so we're not gonna be acclimating anything. Only when we bring something from like the wild or a pet store or something, we'll then acclimate it, but all these systems are pretty much identical. Now the same thing with this guy, let's see. See, the whole like goal is when you go like this, it like suctions them in, but it's gotta be like perfect timing. Got him. Look at that. We don't want him to puff up, so we're gonna do this real quick. We can get him to swim out. Boom, there he goes. Oh, blue and yellow cod's checking him out. No, hey, hey! Wow, that was a little risky. Fish are definitely checking them out. When they see a smaller fish added, they're, you know, you gotta think about it. They don't have hands, so their mouth is kind of their hands. As you can see, he grabbed him and spit him out right away. Those puffer fish also have those spines, so anytime something bigger tries to eat them, they use that as their defense mechanism, and they're actually able to use it underwater without dying, so nothing should mess with him. After seeing that happen, they kind of learned their lesson now, and I think he'll be totally fine in here. Mini puffers looking good, showing good signs, doesn't look stressed out whatsoever, just swimming throughout all these balls, and he probably is 
chasing these things around. It keeps him entertained. Look, don't think he's in here forever. Once he outgrows this, he'll go back with his brother in the 6,000 gallon pond. That guy was like pushing it, putting him in there, but I think he's big enough. So we were able to add him, but this guy definitely needs some more size. So give him a couple months and then he'll be added to there. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see added to the new mini saltwater pond. Our last mini pond, we did have a ton of fish. I did rehome a good amount to some of my buddies and I also have some in the 200 gallon. Maybe we can add our shark back here, a couple other fish, maybe even our grouper. But um, that being said, see you guys in the next one. See ya!